Card number two is understanding. Understanding is um, pictured by a caged bird. And there are plenty of birds on the outside in the distance. Looks like they're coming in, into the cage. And that bird looks like he wants to get out with the other birds. So card number two is understanding from the Osho Zen Tarot. Um, the allocation of this card is the page of water. It says you are out of jail, out of the cage. You can open, this is present. Out, open your wings and the whole sky is yours. All the stars and the moon and the sun belong to you. You can disappear into the blueness of the beyond. Just drop clean to this cage. And this is so true for me. I remember when I first read it a few days ago. Basically, it, if you look around me now, I'm kind of in a cage right now. Take a look. I'm in a gazebo. So I'm kind of in a cage right now. And basically, what it's saying is that, you know, you're in this cage. You're looking out. You want to go out there. You're free. The door is open. There's no reason for you not to be out there. But you're scared to go because you've gotten so used to being in this cage. And that's true. That's what the homeless system you know, the, the, any type of governmental institutionalization, institution system, whatever, um, that's what it does to you. You know, it trains you to stay in behind the bars, you know. And long after the bars are no longer there, you're still staying behind the bars. And this is in relation to, um, there was a scientific experiment about the five monkeys, and that's the very same thing. The five monkeys, they were these monkeys that were put into a cage, a banana split on the staircase. When the first version of the five, the first generation of five monkeys came in, all of the monkeys ran up to try to get the banana off the staircase, brought it down to share with each other, whatever. Okay? Then the second generation, second group of monkeys were brought in. When um, the monkeys were at the staircase, they were shocked. And they kept doing this over the generations. And then it got to the point where there was no longer a shock that was involved in punishing the monkeys if they tried to get the banana. But all the monkeys that had been there in prior generations and saw saw the person being shocked or the monkey being shocked, they would jump and beat up that monkey because what happens is if that monkey jumps, jumps up, not only is that monkey shocked, but then they progress the experiment to not only was that one monkey shot, shocked, but all of them were, you know, abused because that one monkey did it. So now when the mon one monkey went up, and they no longer had those punishments in place, all the monkeys that had been there previously would jump on that monkey and beat them down because they didn't want to get um, have that happen. And I think that's what happens to black people, you know, and why they do the things they do, you know. Think back to Tamra Mowry and all that with the relationships and stuff. But anyhow, um, it says drop clinging to this cage, move out of the cage, and the whole sky is yours. And that's true for me, the sky is the limit. I just have to get past these bars that I locked myself behind, you know, this overweight, this, this big fat gut, you know, this big fat belly, you know, and the reason that I wear tight clothes, y'all, is not because I think that, you know, I'm attractive in them or anything like that, it's because I know I have potential and I know that I fuck, that my body is fucked up, you know, if you look at this, I will show you the total fucktivity of my body, it's, I know that I've gained weight, you know, this should not be here, you know, especially for someone that's the seat on top, it shouldn't be here, so, so, you know, the reason I wear tight clothes is not because I think that I look good or anything like that. The reason that I wear it is, is a reminder that, you know, I can, you know, and right now, you know, I'm at the point where, you know, it's out there, but, but I can still see that there's hope that I can get it back together. I can still see that it's workable, you know, and that once I get my body back in shape, I can still visualize, you know, what it's going to look like, and it's going to be damn sexy, you know? So, it's me... Um, you know, reminding myself, you know, this this fat, overweight woman that's going to be wearing dumpy clothes all day, that's not me. Not at all. <laughs> this is who I am. I just got to work my body, work out my body, and I'm going to be doing that later on today. Um, today's day two of my um, boot camp, by the way. So, um, yeah, so coming out from behind the cages. And it says, um, in the inner, open your wings and fly across the sun like an eagle in the inner sky and this is so funny because it relates to the first card the possibilities are endless that was the past before I was caged this is it's so ironic how it fits perfectly and this is the present where I'm still in the cage I'm looking out I can get out I can do whatever it is I need to do I can do it I just got to do it you know like the eagle I got to soar stop being this little scared bird that they created me into and 
spread my wings and fly. And I'm going to do it, y'all, for real, you know. And, um, you know, as much as, as I'm able. But I do understand because, like, I've been trained now. The process is in me that, you know, these people, the legal system, and, you know, just people in the world in general that have influence, they, and not even big influence. It could be, like, coworkers with more friends than you. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they can make things happen. Homeless people know on their own that some shit can work that. You can go to jail. You can be put in a mental institution just on the basis of what somebody else else says about you and what somebody else paints into other people's heads. So, you know, we know. But the thing is that, you know, forget all that. You know, I have to, and I was, like I was telling this lady last night that uh, the one that responded to me about that hip-hop thing, she just continuously kept sending me emails. And it wasn't about anything positive or productive. I had already told her I was not interested based on her professionalism. But she was just steady sending me emails on a Saturday night. If you're a talent scout, Saturday night you should be out scouting talent. Not harassing a female that don't even qualify. Y'all saw my body. I don't even qualify for that stuff, you know. So <laughs> why are you even harassing me about it? You know, I told you no. You know, I told you no. Is it a matter of you just, you know, feeling like you need to overcome me? Little old me, you know. I said, no, I don't want it, you know. I don't want it. I'm not interested. There's no need for you to continue to send me messages, you know. And then I try to come from another standpoint. But I'll do a video on that as well because I will tell you all about that stuff. But um, so it's just, you know, you have to, and I was telling her, you have to focus on, you know, think about what you're communicating. What is your purpose in you contacting me? You know, I've already told you that I have absolutely, I'm not interested, so I don't have any business with you, you know. <laughs> you know, and um, the only thing I could think if you continue to email me is that there's something that you want from me. What is it that you want from me? You know, what is it that you want from me? Do you just want communication with me? Because, you know, it's Saturday night. If you're a talent scout, you should be out scouting talent. You're, I mean, wherever you are, you know, if you're, and they're, wait, they are there. They're, according to what she had on the ad, they're in Biscayne, off of Biscayne. So you should be out. You know, hitting the pen, you should be out anywhere, anywhere but sitting behind a computer, sending long ass emails to me. You should be at Bayside, lots of young, fresh people there. You should be on South Beach. You should be downtown Fort Lauderdale. You should be on the boardwalk. You should be all these little clubs. You should be somewhere looking for people, you know. And you're talking about you've been in business for 45 years. If I was you, that wasn't even. Has, you know, if you've been in business that long, then you should know better than to be on Craigslist looking for. I don't say the name, but you should you should know better than to be on this little ad looking for people. You should be out. You should have enough people skills that you should be out and doing something. You know, you know. So, anyways, you know, so you know the thing about focusing on your goals, and that's the thing that keeps a lot of us caged birds from flying because instead of focusing on where we want to be, we're focusing on where people want us to be, where we're at, where we've been. We need to focus on what we want to be. Where do I want to be? Okay, so what? Maria Willoughby, you know, had 20 years of administration, administrative experience. I still have administrative skills, okay? So what about Maria? Maria did have all of those great things. Yes, I did. I had all of those wonderful things. But, and I still have them by the grace of God. I, I still have those abilities and talents. But the question is, where does Maria want to be? Where do I want to go? Life is so exciting. Where, what is the next step for Maria Tranquility? Where am I going with my life right now? You know, even though I'm 40, I'm still fairly young in spirit. <laughs> you know, still fairly young in spirit. Um, I have the ability to exercise and get myself together. You know, I have the ability to still communicate well. And as y'all can see, you know, sometimes, you know, my words run over each other and things like that. And that's just from the thing of being locked into shelters and all that so long that you can't get a word out edgewise. So, and you're all you're around this person and everything, everything, all day. But, you know, it's okay because the thing is, I still have the basics. I have the desire. I have the will. And, you know, once I uh, get myself together and stop downing myself so much or being so hard on myself, yeah, I can get out and meet people that are actually... Um, may improve some of this. So, like I said, I'm not really, you know, I'm going to have to open myself up to um, not just the black intelligentsia, is what we call it, but also, you know, to people that, you know, I feel are on a different level or maybe at a low level, but, you know, they've always been accustomed to speaking a certain way so I can get my 
my presentation back, you know, as far as the way that I speak, because I know I'm ghetto right now. I know it, you know. <laughs> I don't have to have nobody tell me. And some people are disappointed because, like I said, I put ads up um, on different websites, and when they see my picture, and I didn't really think that I looked that different, but when they see my picture, they're thinking that my presentation is going to be one thing, but then when they um, hear a video or something, they, they're just like, oh, you're really ghetto, <laughs> or really urban, you know, so, you know, it is what it is, I'm happy about who I am, and, you know, I'm excited about the transformation process, you know, into the bigger, better, um, more polished Maria, you know, because not only am I going to be as polished as I was, I'm going to have some wisdom behind it now, so that's even better, and I don't have all the wisdom, so I'll probably get knocked down a few more times, you know, thrown in jail, you know, whatever, you know, who knows, who knows this. The possibilities are endless for the good or for the bad, and I'm okay with that. You know, I open it with, um, I welcome it with open arms. Um, and so, oh my God, I don't know if y'all heard that splash. Oh shit! This this bird just picked up this big ass fish. Oh my goodness! So I don't know what kind of bird this is. The fish is like that big. The bird is like this big. And so I was sitting here and I heard this huge splash. I'm like, what the hell? Somebody, there's nobody around throwing stuff in the water. This bird just splashed in. And you can see the fish because if I stand on the bridge, I can see the fish. And got this big old fish and just all flying. It was the equivalent of, I don't know if y'all saw the um, YouTube video where there was a little boy and the eagle swooped down and picked up the boy and went off. That's how it was. The eagle, whatever kind of bird this was, swooped down, picked up the fish and just went off insane if y'all have never seen that in your life y'all have um y'all have missed something because that was just shocking but anyhow um where was i it says um you are out of jail out of the cage you can open your wings and the whole sky is all yours all the stars and the moon and the sun belong to you you can disappear into the blueness of the beyond you just drop clinging to the cage move out of the cage and the whole sky is yours open your wings and fly just like that bird did catch what you need and fly across the sun like an eagle. In the inner sky, in the inner world, freedom is the highest value. So when you go into things that are not tangible, um, not materialistic, you know, freedom, you know, your soul for freedom is the highest value. Everything else is secondary, even blissfulness, ecstasy. There are thousands of flowers, uncountable, but they all become possible in the climate of freedom. So freedom basically is what they're saying allows flowers to grow, which is coincidental because I used to publish a, a magazine, newsletter magazine called Wildflower, and that's what it was about, the weeds that grow wildly that, you know, the system and society, you know, wants to pluck up because they say that they're weeds, but they're actually wildflowers, beautiful things. Um, so anyway, the commentary that the author wrote is the bird pictured on this card is looking out for what, from what seems to be a cage. There is no door, and actually the bars are disappearing. The bars were only an illusion, and this small bird is being summoned. And that's true. The system and all that stuff is a bunch of fuckery. It's a mind thing. You, you know, it's a mind, it's a straw man, real man. It's a mind thing. You enslave yourself, your mind. When you're in a situation like that, either you can challenge yourself to be greater. And that's what the slaves did, really. You know, when they sang their spirituals and things like that, when they worked in soil, it was to keep up their spirits. That's what was important. So whatever you got to do to keep up your spirit, that's what you do, um, as much as you are able. Now, um, the bars were an illusion, and the small bird is being summoned by the grace and freedom and encouragement of others. So that's what we need, you know, because we've been, and that's what I was saying last night, you know, again, like I said, I do these uh, different dating sites or whatever, not to date, but because I need, you know, some interaction, some exchange, I need some heartfelt conversation. And, um... But anyways, that was one of the things, like one of the um, people that I was chatting with, you know, was telling me, oh, you know, why don't we this, that, and the other. And I was just like, well, no, because, you know, I'm in the process of healing. You know, it's going to take me a long time before I get to that point. I'm not even looking to date. I'm not looking for sex. I'm not looking for other than that. I'm just looking for some good conversation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just looking to, you know, find people that want to know about me and that I can get to know about, you know, develop relationships, which is not what you're thinking, but a way of relating. I want to actually relate to these people, find out what makes them fit, you know, what they like, you know, and vice versa. I want them to actually 
that's what true love and care is about anyway. It's about the truth concerning empathy for another person.